President Bush has already answered the biggest question posed by the Columbia disaster. He has insisted NASA's manned space program will carry on. But in light of the loss of Columbia, are the benefits still worth the risks? Here's ABC News correspondent Jim Wooten. Three, two, one. We have booster ignition and liftoff of Space Shuttle Columbia with a multi- Why? Why do we do this? An American president once tried to answer that question. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Is that it? Because it's hard? Because it's hard to do? It is that, of course, so hard, in fact, that in the 41 years since the first one, this country's manned space missions have cost 17 lives. And tonight, as the latest casualties are mourned and memorialized, that question, that very same question, is being asked yet again. Why? Why do we do this? The American people want a space program. They want to dream. They want to soar. They want to be inspired. The senator is a politician, of course, but he once soared into orbit on the shuttle. In most Americans' hearts, there is this yearning to be an explorer, to be an adventurer. I think it's probably part of our character as a people. After the flag, after the bald eagle, it's usually uh, an astronaut on the moon or the shuttle at launch that, that we use to symbolize what we do as a nation. Why are we still doing it? Uh, it, it's a very good question, and it, the reason is basically that NASA has been convinced from the beginning and have convinced many members of Congress that the public simply would not support a space program if there were not human beings involved. I think they're wrong. Still, although NASA has been putting human beings up there with some regularity, the public, or at least the Congress, hasn't seemed all that excited. The budget for space is now about $15 billion a year, less than 1% of the federal government's total expenditures. But even at that, it's been flat for the last decade or so. Last year, President Bush asked for an $800 million cut, and some NASA advocates say its budget has been reduced in real terms by 40% since 1990. Meanwhile, since every manned shuttle mission costs nearly half a billion dollars, there's been a growing clamor for the increased use of robots in space. They're cheaper, the argument goes, better, faster. You don't have to bring them down. And if something does go wrong, the only cost is money. Because you need the human in the loop using human judgment in order for us to accomplish a lot of things. We couldn't have fixed the Hubble Space Telescope without the, uh, the astronaut crew that went up with the corrective optics. Sir, there are lots of exciting scientific things that can be done by robots, but there are also lots of exciting scientific things that require human presence. On the other hand, Dr. Park compares, unfavorably, the unmanned Pathfinder mission to Mars, 300 million miles away, with the space station which is about the distance from New York to Washington, D.C., above the Earth. And yet, uh, that mission, with all the information that it sent, us, sent back about Mars, uh, cost about a fourth as much as a single shuttle launch. So it's, uh, when it comes to cost, there's a factor of at least two orders of magnitude, maybe three, to get the same information uh, robotically as opposed to with human beings. And there's plenty of evidence that the media are no longer as hypnotized by the space program as they once were. The story of Columbia's departure, for example, was on page 3 of the Washington Post, page 14 of the New York Times. And the last time this network broadcast a launch live was more than five years ago. Nevertheless, when disaster struck on Saturday, no story was more important, perhaps because when something does go wrong, the old myth of Americans as adventurers comes to the fore. The vision of a country that does things because they're hard, no matter what. Space flight is the modern embodiment of the American dream. America is about 
pioneering frontiers. It's about taking risks. It's about boldly going where no one has gone before. Uh, I mean, uh, Americans don't go to the Air and Space Museum to get a history of Tang and Velcro, okay? They go there to be inspired. So that's why we do it, to inspire ourselves and others with what courageous adventurers we are as individuals, with how mighty we are as a nation. And not really, or at least not mainly, for the science and technology NASA says has so improved and enhanced our lives on Earth. Maybe so. But what is the maximum acceptable cost in terms of lives of that inspiration? The answer to that may lie in the story of the first circumnavigation of the globe back in the 16th century. In 1519, Ferdinand Magellan left Spain with 270 men on five ships. Three years later, one ship returned with only 18 men, not including Magellan. The age of exploration had begun with an enormous cost. It still continues. I'm Jim Wooten for Nightline in Washington. Since NASA is so determined to keep sending men and women into space, is the shuttle still the right way to go? That conversation in a moment. <laughs>